is not really a zodiac, he's usually causing a chain reaction whilst out men hunting looking for a long kiss good night in the ring. <laughs> it's all about a succession, because it's a done deal for Brian Cox on tonight's Hollywood Swingers. That professional introduction. <laughs> It's time for your favourite segment of the show, Hollywood Swingers, where we celebrate those Hollywood movie stars who have made a swing into music. This week, it's Brian Cox, but not the guy who does the space programme. No, Scotland's own actor, Brian Dennis Cox, born the 1st of June, BDC. 1946. Mm -hmm. It was a Saturday. And Dundee to Father Charles, who was a policeman and later a shopkeeper, and to Mother Mary Ann, who was a spinner in the jute mills. Ooh. Uh, well, they come from Dundee. There's only, like, three things you can do there for, at that time. That's offensive. They, they've made whole BBC Scotland documentaries on it. Jam jute journalism. That's what Dundee's known for. Oh, is it? I yeah. know Dundee for good cakes. And computer games. Cakes and computer games. Uh, but there's 46, so they hadn't invented them then. Sadly, his father passed away when the young Brian was only eight years old. Oh. And his mother suffered several nervous breakdowns, uh, which meant that Cox was brought up by three elder sisters. Can I just say, back in that day, all a woman need to have done was be sad. And it's called a nervous breakdown. No, I think uh, I've read into it. I don't okay. want to go into it, but yeah. Poor lady, though. Yeah. After, you know, after but you just know that it's not been handled nicely. Like you know that no. it's not been handled well no. by society. This poor woman's hard time. So one of the young Cox's escapes at the time was comedy films, and he would go and watch ones with the likes of Jerry Lewis and Dean Martin or Bob Hope and Bing Crosby. Uh, and despite no one pushing him towards a theatrical career, he was compelled at the age of fourteen to wander into the local theatre. Uh, only to find an actor having a fist fight with a stage manager. He was hooked at that point. He was just like, this was something exciting. And that actor was Hugh Grant. <laughs> was not. Uh, <laughs> Cox hung around and he would help out at the Dundee Repertory Company. Been there a million uh, times. Until he made his stage debut at 15. Loving it so much, he left school at the same age. Yes. After two years at the Dundee Rep, uh, he then trained at the London Academy of Music and Dramatic Arts. Lambda. Yep, but wanting to earn an age, a wage, he moved back to Scotland afterwards. He worked in Edinburgh before travelling throughout the UK, working with various stage companies, as well as appearing in the West End in a 1967 production of Shakespeare's As You Like It. Ooh. Now, this is what I liked when I saw this. The actor's TV debut was in a 1968 episode of a BBC drama anthology series that was called Theatre 625. Right. The, the episode he was in was called The Year of the Sex Olympics. <laughs> right, but listen. It sounds like a fan fiction. Yeah, it depicted a future where a small elite controls the mass media Hunger Games. and keep the lower classes docile with an endless stream of lowest common denominator programming and pornography. Uh, and then they, in, within the episode, they've created a new programme where a group of people are left on an island to fend for themselves and they watch it on television. So it's like the Hunger Games meets Black Mirror. But this this programme basically was like so pressing, it basically... It, it Predicted. Reality television uh -huh. series down to a team. But that's literally... That's, that's the actual reality shows I watch yeah, where people go to an island but and either have sex... Or try not to have sex. Yeah. Great. And yet this was like over 50 years ago. And it keeps me docile. They're not wrong. There you go. <laughs> uh, but it would ultimately be one of Cox's very few screen, screen appearances over the next two decades. Uh, with the actor instead focusing on the stage, he had runs with both the Royal Shakespeare Company Ooh, and uh. the, the Royal the National Theatre. Oh. And he became one of the country's, and I'm talking about UK's, most beloved stage actors. However... Cox wanted more, and after making his Broadway debut in 1985, the actor decided to give Hollywood a go. His first US film appearance, over a decade since his last film role, would turn out to be 1986's Manhunter, where, after being recommended to director Michael Mann by Brian Dennehy, Cox would portray the first screen appearance of the infamous character Hannibal Lecter. Unfortunately, the film flopped. Yeah. At the time. Do you know what? He, it's because he never did that thing where he went... 
Had he, he done he that more? Played it and actually acted. No, and see, now people realise no because it's now been reevaluated as a cult classic with many people. I going, don't want to be reevaluated as a cult classic. I want people to go. Oh, that was the biggest selling. That's like you think of the what's his name, Tony Hopkins going, <laughs> and that's like nailed it. <clears throat> Just silly. So back to the stage it was for beans. Brian Cox. Clarice, do you like beans? That classic line. He likes line. beans, <laughs> human beans. Not that this was any downgrade for Crox's craft uh-huh. going to the stage. Still seen as one of the finest UK stage actors. And he had particular praise for his portrayal of King Lear that saw him tour the world with the production. Oh. The actor also taught acting around the world, including in the Arts Theatre School in Moscow. He even wrote a book about it. Right. And he also taught at, like, Caltech and Harvard. Right. He also wrote about the arts for the likes of the New York Times, Esquire and Vanity Fair. However, still wanting to carve out Just a big screen career. Sounds like... Every other job and actor I know who has to kind of make yeah, ends meet. Pretty much. You make it sound like it's really fancy, but that's like when you're, oh, I need some work. I've just written a wee article for the Metro well, about my favourite headsets. Cox flung himself into a number of projects, including starring in two of the early episodes of Sharp with Sean Bean. But he then, his character was written out the series because Cox left. Uh, because of the terrible working conditions. And he went, I'm not staying here and filming this. this oh is- no, Brian, where are you going? I'm Sharp. I'm a man, I've got a boat and a gun, and I'm dying. No, I'm alive. But it was 1995, and at the age of nearly 50, and funnily enough, two very Scottish projects that would catapult the actor into Hollywood (gasps) started. What were they, Paul? In the same year, the actor starred in both Rob Roy with Liam Neeson and in Mel Gibson's Braveheart. Both were big hits. So, two really inaccurate films. Doesn't matter, but they were big Scottish things and he was a big Scottish guy in them and that put Cox at the tip of Hollywood's tongues. Okay. Just the next year, he starred in Chain Reaction with yes. Keanu Reeves. Classic. The Glimmer Man with Steven Seagal. Oh, not the Glimmer Man. That's right. <laughs> hey, the Killer Man with a credit card. And The Long Kiss Goodnight with Gina Davis and Samuel Jackson. Right. The year after that, he was in Kiss the Girls with Morgan Freeman. Know that. And The Boxer with Daniel Day-Lewis. And then it's ever since, it was just a steady stream of great supporting roles ever since. In dramas. He played brilliantly villainous antagonists in the likes of... He was in the Bourne, the first two Bourne films. He was in X-Men 2. He was in like, Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Oh! He won an Emmy for playing Herman Goring in the TV movie Nuremberg. Right, right, right. He'd star in comedies like uh, Rushmore with Bill Murray. He was in the Good cult film. classic Super Troopers. As well as he got a nomination for his guest role in Fraser, the sitcom. I've seen every episode of he that. He played so Daphne I'm... Moon's dad. So he did! Yeah. And do you know who played Daphne Moon's brothers? Those yeah. Australian actors, the one from Without a Trace. Oh, there you go. And they do a terrible English accent. Uh, he starred in horrors like The Ring. He was in big historical epics like Troy with Brad Pitt. He, he's in thrillers like David Fincher's Zodiac. But despite his success in Tinseltown, Town, Brian Cox never, ever forgot where he came from and he was happy to star in a number of Scottish productions. So he would always be up, popping up in things like The Flying Scotsman, the film, and he was even two series as one of Dundee's favourite sons, Bob Servant. Yes. Independent. Yes. Uh, now, despite now having the kind <clears throat> of Hollywood career that any actor would kill for, it's somewhat fitting of the man's talent and perseverance that perhaps one of his biggest, certainly one of his most memorable roles came just in the last few years where starring as Logan Roy, the Dundee-born patriarch of the family featured in the HBO hit series Succession, yes. Cox was finally the bona fide leading star of a big, massive project. Yes. And he would win the Golden Globe for Best Actor in a Television Series. Go on yourself, Coxie. I mean, it's not to say that he wasn't successful throughout, but he was always just, he was a brilliant support no, actor. But he's got that, and now he was like the, the leading guy. He's got that career that you envy, that you want, the career where you can be the guy who's in loads of stuff, but you don't get bothered at airports. Yep, you don't get annoyed, but you can chew the scenery in every film you're in. And you know everybody. You've worked with the greats. Mm-hmm. Gina Davis, know her well. Good pals with her, Gina. Like, that's the kind of life you want to live, where you're Hollywood and you're in the circles, but you're not getting... Holly, you're not the... Getting top. hunted mm-hmm. by paparazzi. Now, Cox can currently be seen starring as the villain in the James Bond-based reality series, 
007. Yeah, but I don't think he knew that that was. Yep, the actor supposedly only signed up for it because he thought he was going to be in one of the Bond films That's as the baddie. Give Brian Cox a role in a Bond film simply because he got tricked into being in a reality show about Allegedly, James Bond. we don't know that for sure, but that supposedly is the, the thing. But he also has at least three film projects and countless other things currently in production or in pre-production. So we'll still see plenty of cocks on our screens in the future. But to tonight's song, and it's from the actor's run in the hit musical The Music Man, that we find our tune for this week. I like the song from that. Now, Do you know I'm, the one, the, and I can play, what can you play? I play piano, pia, pia, piano. That's, that's my favourite song from The Music Man. I don't think Black Lace are in <laughs> The Music Man. You don't know? I don't know. Uh, now, <laughs> I'm not sure how well read the actor Brian Cox is, but he certainly has a fond obsession for marrying the librarian. Marion. Madam Librarian. What can I do, my dear, to catch your ear? I love you madly, madly, Madam Librarian. Marion, heaven help us if the library caught on fire and the volunteer hose brigade men had to whisper the news to Marion. Madam Librarian. What can I say, my dear, to make it clear? I need you badly, badly, Madam Librarian. Marion, if I stumbled and I busted my whatchamacallit, I could lie on the floor unnoticed till my body had turned to carrion. Madam Librarian. Now in the moonlight, a man could sing it. In the moonlight, and a fellow would know that his darling had heard every word of his song. With the moonlight, helping along. But when I try in here to tell you, dear, I love you madly, madly, Madam Librarian. Marion, it's a long lost cause I can never win. For the civilized world accepts as unforgivable sin. Any talking out loud with any librarian such as me. Marion. Madam Librarian. That was Brian Cox with Mary and the Librarian. Here in the Ashley Story Show, we rate our Hollywood swingers on a scale of 1 to 100. Kenny Roger Roasters, Kenny Roger being the original and the best Hollywood singer. Paul, how many roasters do you give Mr Cox? Uh, for me, Brian Cox, I don't know. 45. I think it was good. I think it was very... Was jovial enough? It was, it's, it was very musically. Never... He did a good musical voice. It was good musical singing. I'm going to give it... 71. If you're wanting to like hear him Rogers maybe Roasters. in a more upbeat kind of number, from the same musical, he does 76 trombones, but it's like... He only sings for a minute and a half of a six and a half minute song, so I can't play all of that. <clears throat> but that would have been probably given a bit of a bounce here. I don't know. I'm going to revise it. It's 55. Like, the truth of the matter is, it doesn't really matter what we think about it. It's what you think about it that matters. Get in touch via text at 
80295 and let us know how many Kenny Rogers roasters do you give Brian Cox? You can also WhatsApp us. What's that WhatsApp, Paul? It's 08085 Oh, oh. Or you can email us. It's Ashley Story Show at bbc.co.uk. Can I just say as well that if someone that knows Brian Cox is listening in, I think he's a great actor. Why are you worried Because I feel like that? I've slated his singing and this might be someone that's actually... Okay, one that wasn't even close to slating his singing. I know what a slating from you feels like. Um, last week when you told me that people in the past wouldn't want to be my friend over and over again, that was a slating. You're merely slightly honest that's about... The truth. No, that's May just West the truth. No, Mae West... You just been... can't handle <laughs> the truth. Shut up, um, Colonel Jessup. <laughs> Deep cut. How do you know his name? Because I just sat and watched a lawyer discuss whether or not a few good men <laughs> is legally uh, accurate. Was it? Um, no. No. You can't shout at people in a courtroom. And yeah. also, at that time, this is the funniest thing about it, they had a soldier talking about it's a It's an few... army courtroom, but they didn't It's not army. Them, they're Marines. They're not soldiers. They had a guy from the Marine You're Corps. You're I wish. <laughs> Ura. They I thought had... the Marine was just a branch of the army. No, it's a branch of the armed forces. The army are a branch of the armed forces. Please don't start this conversation now. Listen I to me. I thought it was just army, navy, air force. Yes. Yeah, so you... No. So, listen to me. They said that in that film, the way he goes, you need people like me standing on those fences, pointing a gun. He was like, the weirdest thing about that is at the time, Guantanamo Bay was like the easiest building. There was nothing there. There was nobody was coming through that. So that was pre-Getmo being used as mm -hmm. a prison and when it was just an empty space. So there was no purpose for it. Also, Demi Moore's character doesn't exist. Why have I got sucked into this conversation through my brain? Get in touch. Let us know your scores for Brian Cox. Let's have a little palate cleanser. We go from a Hollywood swinger to a Scottish legend singing about Hollywood. It's Lewis Capaldi, my future husband, singing Hollywood. <laughs>